So today we're going to tear apart this cylinder, give you a quick review, overview of exactly how to do this. Before you pull your cylinder apart, you're going to want to grab your Allegheny York catalog. Once you get your catalog out and ready, you're going to want to loosen this gland nut. Most guys will use a tool, I just use my bare hands. Screw this the whole way out. There she is. And, okay. So on this guy, on this piston, we have two U-cups. So they'll be easy to identify. Up here on our gland, we have an O-ring and a backup. That's going to seal this gland to the inside of your tube. Before we can get the seals outside out of this gland, we're going to have to bust this nut off of the end of this rod. Now we have our gland off, so we can go ahead and pull the seals out of there and figure out what size they are. <laughs> so when we take these seals out of the gland here, we don't actually have to be too careful with the seals. So nice pick like that, you just jam it down into the, the urethane or the rubber seals, and then you can just pry them out of there. Like a, oh, yeah. We got a K wiper in there. I did not expect the K wiper. Unloaded U cup there. And that's everything out of the gland. We just have a wiper and a rod U cup down there. And we'll pop this other thing out here. And then we have an O ring and a backup for the gland seal. piston. Rather than trying to pry those off of there, we're just going to get a knife and we're going to cut them off. One thing to note about this piston is that we have two U-cups. One U-cup is facing this way, the other U-cup is facing the other way. That makes this a double acting piston. So we can put fluid on this side of the cylinder and extend it this way, or we can put fluid pressure on this side of the cylinder and we can retract it. And then 
there's the other one. So that's all our old parts. That's all we have. A wiper, what's left of our rod U-cup, our gland seals, which is just an O-ring and a backup, and then our two piston seals or U-cups. We don't even have any wear bands in this simple cylinder. <clears throat> and actually, one last thing to look at is actually down here but in the in the piston there, we have another O-ring down there, and that's going to make the seal between the piston and the rod. Just an O-ring. <clears throat> Now we need to find out if this is an inch or a metric size cylinder. So the easiest thing to measure is the rod. Got my calipers and it's right on one and a quarter inches. So we know that it's an inch size cylinder now. Now when we measure this piston we have to consider the fact that this piston has to be a little bit smaller than the bore so that the piston can fit into there. So we'll measure this guy up and it's measuring 2.480 or so, so that means it's going to be a, a two and a half inch bore. <clears throat> we can measure the cross section of our U-cup here. It's a little bit under down here on the heel because we don't want the seal to rub. We only want the seal to be making contact up here on the lip side. So it's measuring about 302, 301, so that's going to be a 5 16 cross section. <clears throat> That being said, we could also measure this, which this is uh, one and seven eighths. Here at Allegheny York, all of our U-cup style profiles are going to start out with the profile number, and then they're going to have it's going to be the cross-sectional size, so it's going to be three one two zero, <clears throat> and then it's one inch and seven eighths. So we always go by the inside diameter of the U-cup. So this part number is going to at least have a 3120-1875. And then a dash, and we measure the height of the seal, should be a half inch tall. So it'll be a dash 500. Now in this case, this is a non-loaded U-cup. So this profile here is going to be our UNP profile. It's a urethane piston U-cup, <clears throat> so the part number is going to be a UNP-31201875. Dash 500 for the height. <clears throat> We're going to have to get two of those. <clears throat> Next, to try and identify what this O-ring size is, we're going to measure the height and the cross section. In this case, this is going to be a nominal cross section of 139 thousandths, which a lot of people will call that an eighth inch O-ring. It's going to be a 2-200 series. And then we're going to measure the O-ring by the inside diameter. So it's right about 1.065 by that cross section. So this O-ring is going to be a 2-215. And it feels like it's a 70 durometer, so it's going to be a 2 215 N70. No backup for that one. Now, this one here. Looks like it's going to be the same cross section, a 139. You just want to measure the cross section this way and the height and take the average of the two. <clears throat> and then the ID of this. Should be just under uh, two and a half inches. Yep, 2.470 something. So this is going to be a 2 230 and 70 and for nitrile or buna. And then we have one of these contoured backups. It's going to be the same part number as the O ring. We're just going to change the two before the dash to an eight. Okay, so this is a 2 230 O ring. This is an 8-230 contoured backup. And then the only thing else we have to do is try and measure this U-cup here, what's left of it. If your U-cup's too destroyed, <clears throat> you can get an expander and stick it down in the groove here 
get it to the right size, pull that out, and you can use your calipers to measure that. We know that it's going to be a one inch inside diameter on the seal, so we just need to figure out what the cross section and height is. I think we found our problem since uh, this guy is in a couple of pieces. I'm thinking it's going to be a 187 cross section. It'll be a quarter inch. I can't tell how this thing goes back together. Can't even tell if I got the right side of it. There she is. That's going to be a quarter inch cross section. So this is going to be a quarter inch cross section. It wasn't loaded, but it won't hurt to put a loaded lip seal in here. So this part number is going to be for a one and a quarter inch ID. <clears throat> and it's, this one has a quarter inch cross section. So our part number is going to be a 250 for the quarter inch cross section. 01250 for the one and a quarter inch rod. And then it was three eighths tall, so it's going to be a dash 375. And we're going to put a BLLS uh, U-cup in there, which is a beveled lip loaded lip seal. Here's our wiper, what's left of our wiper, and we can see on the top here we've got a 30 degree angle. We're close to a 30 degree angle. That's a dead giveaway that this is a K style wiper. The K wipers are really easy to identify. It's just a K dash whatever the rod size is. So in this case we have a one and, an eight, one and a quarter inch rod size, so this is going to be a K dash 1250. And here's what's left with our old seals. And this is the new seals. So we'll go ahead and stuff, <clears throat> stretch these piston U cups over our piston. And then we'll stretch our O ring and back up over the outside of the gland. And then we'll go ahead and we'll stuff our wiper and rod seal down inside the gland and put it, throw it back together and call it a day. So this is our IT-100 tool. It's a rod U-cup installation tool for the gland. You want to put your single bar on the outside and put the other two on the inside. And then you can fold this guy up into a kidney bean. There it is. You just got to talk to her nice. Now you can see our U cups down inside of there. It's facing this direction, the direction of the pressure. Now we're just going to stuff our K wiper in. That should go in pretty easy. Just work it all the way around. And there it is. That's all there is to the wiper. Next, we're going to want to put our backup on. You got to pay attention. One side of this backup is flat. The other side has a concave shape to it. You want that concave shape to be on the O-ring side. So the flat side of it goes back up against the outside of your gland. There she goes. The well, last thing I want to say is on this guy, you can see this is a 516 cross section U cup. This thing is going to be a bear 
to try and stretch over this piston diameter and get it down into that groove. So the best way to do this is just to put this guy in some hydraulic fluid and heat it up, get it about as warm as you can handle to touch with your hands. And then you'll be able to, it'll help you stretch this guy over and pop into the groove. All right, so in, I don't know if you can see it in the camera lens or not. This is the piston that went inside that cylinder. And you'll notice that there's just two grooves for the U-cups, opposing U-cups because it is a uh, double acting cylinder, but there's no wear band. And this wear right here is caused by the weight of the load on that cylinder. Uh, it ca causes the piston to push into the side of the cylinder and just wear into the cylinder. So inside the cylinder is probably worn as well. Whereas if the design would have had a wear band uh, on the piston, that would have prevented the piston from making contact with the side of the bore. Eventually that'll cause problems. You'll get metal flakes that get into your fluid and uh, that causes problems and that's typically what's gonna wear your seals out the quickest.